In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a new prospect in one site. You'll also learn how to apply that prospect for an apartment and how to run the applicant's background screening report. When you are contacted by a prospect, whether it's by phone or a walk-in visit, you should open up a guest card by clicking the New Prospect button in the upper left-hand corner. While getting to know about the prospect and their needs, the guest card will help you lead the discussion by touching on important items. Fill out the guest card as you are building a rapport with the prospect and pay careful attention to all fields that are marked red. These fields must be completed in order to save the guest card. After naming your prospect, one site will tell you if that name appears as a duplicate in the system. This is helpful in determining whether or not the prospect has contacted the property before. As you complete the necessary fields, do your best to remain conversational with the prospect, rather than interrogating them for information. You want your first impression to be an inviting one. And don't forget about these last two red items. You won't be able to save the guest card until they're completed. Be sure to use the notes section for any special comments you have regarding the prospect. Now that you've completed the guest card, click Save to add the prospect into OneSite. At the bottom of the prospects file, you can see four tabs. The follow-up tab shows you any scheduled follow-ups that need to be completed for this prospect. You can add to this list by clicking Schedule Follow-up and selecting the date and method to follow up with this prospect again. In the Activity tab, you can see any follow-up activities that have been logged for this prospect. Since he only has logged a phone call, he cannot yet apply for an apartment. There must be a visit logged into OneSite first. To record the necessary visit, simply click Record Activity and complete the form that appears. This Record Activity button is used to record any unscheduled follow-ups, such as another phone call from the same prospect or a walk-in tour from a prospect that is already in OneSite. For a scheduled activity, just go back to the follow-up tab and click complete next to the activity you've done. The same form will pop up, so just complete that form and the follow-up will be recorded. Moving on to the Units Shown tab, we'll click the Show Unit button to record exactly which unit our prospects saw and what they thought of it. Now onto the Quotes tab, where we can print out the unit's pricing and details for our prospect. By clicking Check Availability, we'll be able to see the information on all available units and find the ones that our prospect saw. You can use the search criteria to narrow down your results, but I see my prospect's unit right here. Clicking Quote will open up the lease terms on that particular unit, including the price, lease term, and move-in date. While on this screen, you can also use the Showed Unit checkbox as a shortcut to record that this unit was shown. Clicking Finish will open a printable version of the quote for you to give to the prospect. It is often helpful to write important information on here like deposit amounts, additional fees, concessions, etc. Now that we have a better understanding of how to use these four tabs, we can apply the prospect for an apartment. Once you've received the prospect's completed rental application, hold deposit, and application fee, you can apply them for an apartment by clicking the Apply Now button on the left sidebar of the prospect's file. Here, all you need to do is enter in the information from the prospect's rental application. Be sure to fill out as much information as possible. Never guess at information, but don't skip an item just because it's not a red field. Clicking Next will bring you to the Rental History section. Click the Main Street button to enter the prospect's current or previous address. If you don't know the exact move-in date at this address, just go off of the rental application's How Long field. Next, we're on to the Employment section. Here, it's really only necessary that you complete the red fields with the prospect's information. Just note that the estimated annual income cannot be zero even if the prospect is a full-time student or otherwise unemployed. If that's the case, just use either one penny or one dollar to complete the field. In the Emergency and Vehicles and Pets sections, we'll just go through filling in as much information as we can.
The Select Unit section is where you'll choose which apartment to hold for your applicant. This page will populate a list of any quotes that you have already created for your applicant, as well as giving you the option to create a new quote to use. Here you can use the exact same steps as we did when we created a quote earlier in this video. Make sure that the unit will be ready for the move-in date the applicant is looking for. If the unit would need to be held vacant for more than 20 days, you'll need your property manager's approval to hold it. If it would be held vacant for more than 30 days, your regional manager must approve. Since this unit will be made ready by the 18th, we'll only be holding it vacant for 13 days for a move-in date of the 1st. So we can go ahead and choose this unit without seeking further approval. You can print this out if your applicant doesn't already have a copy, otherwise just close out of these windows. Now that we have a quote to choose from, we'll select this unit and click Next. Here you're creating a resident portal account for the applicant. Just click Suggest and then click Next. Some sites may have additional options to add here, but like most sites, this one does not. Just click Next. Here, our application fee should populate automatically. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll set it to $0. The handling of the security deposit field varies from site to site, so ask either your property manager or senior leasing consultant how to handle it. Some sites leave this number at 0, while others enter the actual deposit amount. Some sites may even have an additional field for their last month's rent deposit, so be sure to look for advice on this field from your manager or senior leasing consultant. Now select your reason for leasing, your property's late method, make sure the correct leasing agent gets credit for the lease, and click Next. Finally, we have our summary page. If you decide to print or email this summary for your applicant, make sure you check it for errors. For example, if your site enters zero for the security deposit, be sure to note on the summary what the deposit actually is. If there are any other nuances that may confuse the applicant, make sure they are clearly addressed. After clicking Finish, we'll be brought to our applicant's new account, where we'll close out of this initial pop-up. In order to provide the best customer experience, we want to run the background check as soon as possible so we can give the prospect an approval or decline answer. Clicking the Screen Now button in the left sidebar will open the Screen Resident pop-up. Remember that all applicants age 18 and over must be screened at the same time. Do not click Screen Now until all applicants have been entered into one site. Here you'll click the checkbox next to all of the applicants so they'll all be screened together. Since we only have one applicant, we'll check him off. If you see Safe Rent login fields, you will need to use your Safe Rent username and password in order to complete the screening. If you do not see these login fields, just click Screen. After entering your SafeRent login and clicking Screen, you're brought to SafeRent's screening page where you'll see that much of your applicant's information is already populated. All that you'll need to do from here is select whether or not the screening is for affordable housing, enter the applicant's rent at their current address, and click Submit. If you don't know the applicant's current rent, just enter in $1. Once your submission is processed, you'll see a page showing the status of your screenings. This page will automatically refresh itself as the screenings are completed. You can see here that the status automatically updated from in progress to complete. From here you can see that the applicant was conditionally accepted based on the credit screening and accepted based on the criminal screening. Clicking view will give us a more detailed look at the report. Here we can see a little more information regarding the applicant's scores. We can see even more in-depth if we click View Reports. Here you'll find all of the information that makes up the credit and criminal screening results. These reports must be printed and kept in the applicant's file. Clicking View Letters will open up the letter of acceptance or decline for your applicant. An acceptance letter is not always necessary to print, but all declines must be printed and either mailed or handed to the declined applicant. Once we've got the necessary printed reports, we can close out of the Safe Rent window. Back in the applicant's OneSite account, clicking the Refresh button will automatically update the applicant's screening results. If the applicant was approved, then you're all done.
If the applicant had been declined by the screening, we would immediately click the Deny Application button to put the unit back on the market. Just choose your reason and click Save. If an applicant decides to cancel for any reason, we'll click Cancel Application and follow the same steps as we would for a decline. Fill out the mandatory fields, make a note of the activity, and click Save. If you have any further questions about prospects or applicants in OneSite, your property manager or senior leasing consultant should be able to help you.